What's going on, Unc, man? What you up to today, man? That's a very good question. Just <laughs> redesigning everything. Hey, man, Just redesigning but you, everything. But you know, that's our life, man. We always, we always a work in progress, man. So it's yeah. the same way with what you're doing with your platform. It's a work in progress, yeah. man. But hey, yeah. the, the biggest thing is work. <laughs> work. Just doing it. Yeah, just work. Yeah, instead of just sitting around trying to figure it out, just just go, man. Don't like how you told me some years ago. You said, man, I ain't just think I just do, and I just started doing, man. Started making moves because I guess the longer you sat there trying to figure out things, I guess I would say the less progress you made. So at some point, you just figured out and say, you know what, I'm gonna start making some progress. I'm gonna start doing something, and you did that. And I mean, look at how you overcame, you know, what I'm saying your illness to the point to where. You functional now, you know, going from non-functional to now, you functioning, you know, and you may not function with everybody, but hey, you functioning better than what you were doing the day before, the day before that, and the day before that. So progress is progress. I don't care if it's one step, two step, three step, a step is a step. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Um, my day has been pretty good. Normally, I'm always in church on mm -hmm. Sundays. I love what I do. I love the people. It's very important for all of us, I think, to always, if you want something a little bit more, you want to step up on that ladder, yes, find sir. those people that already have stepped up on that ladder. Mm -hmm. But find those people that that somewhat inspire you. Yeah. Not for us to always be inspiring other people, but someone that inspires us. Yeah. And that's how I look at my day to day new ideas, because I kept hearing different things I would listen to that's motivational to me, but it all kept talking about the same thing. Uh, just start, just do it. Nike came up with that, that thing about just do it. <laughs> same thing, yeah. you know, and, and that's how I felt this morning. So when I woke up, I got, I just had energy, just being inspired by other people. Yeah. It was like I just woke up inspired by myself, just like, I prayed and prayer is good for me, meditation, and my day is a good day. My place looks oh, like yeah. crap right now, but yeah. <laughs> I'm having a great yeah. day. Hey, man, but listen, hey, originality, that's what I keep saying, man. Everybody likes it when you're original. I mean, and that's our life, man. When you be yourself, man, that's the best thing you could ever do. Instead of trying to be everyone else, be what life made you, be the hurt, the pain, and all the things that you have to overcome. Like, you just got to... Be who you are beyond that, and, you know, and I think that's, for me, um, one of the biggest places in my life where I found the most peace is when I finally learned to be myself, because at one time I was trying to be the army, I was trying to be the kid from South Carolina who was running from the issues and things I went through, and finally when I learned who God made me to be, which is a provider, protect the priest, man, I could say my life is better, truly better. Like, I don't need the VA to, you know, give me identity even though they identified me as a veteran but i had to learn my my own um, my value my worth my who i am was beyond you know just trying to be identified as a veteran and i think that's where most veterans have a hard time you know getting over the military y'all um, most of us stay stuck in the what was instead of dealing with what's now and what's now is man you were a man you were a woman before you went into the military you got to go back to being that you can't still, you know, be stuck in the moment of what was because at the end of the day, nobody cares. You know, you got to move on. <laughs> you got to move on. Like, you know, you can live in that box and, oh, man, I was a veteran all these years and I deserve this and I deserve that. And people looking at you like, okay, so, sir, um, we hired you to um to clean this floor and you, you're not doing your job. But I was a veteran. I was at war. And I, I understood that. We talked about that during the interview. But right now, Hey, we got a job for you to do. We need you to do your job. And that's life, man. You know, once you get out of the military, you still got to live, man. You can't just let that moment define the rest of your life. You got to move on at some point. And it's hard. And I, I'm not saying forget about it, but move on and start doing something else. Almost like what you're talking about with your house, your life, and everything else. you making progress every day. And it's one step at a time. That came on board with me uh, for six years. The first one, at one point, I knew, I knew nothing about the VA. I knew nothing about benefits when I went to college. No one told me, so 
I didn't ask for any, but I learned a lot. At one point, I wanted to work on myself, and I was in Miami, Florida. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they were not taking certain veterans in. Yeah. Um, they just didn't. And then when they started working on mental health, and we were talking about, we want to talk about issues from the military, it brought us in. Wow. Six years before they came up with PTSD, I was one of those people that for every, for, the, for three months out of each year, wow. I went there. I met a great psychiatrist. We got a chance to know each other. And they, all they were doing was just talking to us. They had different locations for different people. Mm-hmm. Some of the veterans that I met, uh, one of the guys, he is from Cuba. And his family came here as a kid. And he was talking about his issues by coming to the country, his parents would not speak English oh, and man. how it affected him. But he joined the military. because he always, He'd always speak English for his, for his parents. When someone called, he went to school. But when he went to school, he spoke English. He learned how to speak English. When he came home, he could only speak Spanish. But I learned so much from him in our classes because our classes, they had on one side, it's called ST, STDP, substance abuse. I call it substance abuse pretty much. Mm-hmm. On my side, it was mental health. For those okay. six years, I got so much to learn from other people. Went to our meetings. They told us about how this, uh, they were trying to work on a program for veterans. Mm-hmm. And I think it was something about shell shock back then, how they identified certain things. Yeah, that's, the, I remember hearing that name, because that's what they used to say. My dad was shell shocked because he was a veteran that's himself. It. So. That's all that's I heard it. about a cell shot. <laughs> because that's that's how they identified it. And until those six years coming in for three months each year, wow. 90 days, I would no matter how many shows I would do, no matter what I would do, no matter how my life was going or not going, I came in. And when they came up with this uh, this thing about PTSD, it was something new for a lot of because again, they wasn't they wasn't really trying to identify all, it wasn't trying to identify veterans like the Vietnam era. Okay. They didn't identify those people. They got no benefits yeah. from them. But we learned from them to create the program that I got abo- on board for six years. Okay. So when you when you were mentioning something about, we come to the point that, okay, that happened then, whatever happened to us. Mm-hmm. And my psychiatrist who gave me my, my percentages <clears throat> gave me a lot of things. He asked me to find a life. Yeah. I thought my life was in my career. That yeah, was my drug. Right. That was my drug of choice. Yeah, what I loved doing, but mm-hmm. it didn't make me a person coming home. Yeah. It's like going to military. Did it make us a person coming home? We remember all the training we got in the military, yeah. and their policies and procedures. Mm-hmm. And I did the same. I applied whatever I learned in the military, what I went through. Then I just found something else to do in my career, but. I still wasn't balanced. Yeah. And it took me years to come to, uh, at 65 to want to come to Houston. I said, you know what? I know it's, I heard something about recovery. And that's what Mr. Cash was trying to tell me when he said, find yourself a life. You got to find some, some type of recovery in your life yeah. to recover from where you were, whatever it yeah. may be. Yeah. And I, it took me to be 65 to learn this. And then to know you, like you mentioned, to know yourself work. Yeah. But a lot of stuff has come really within the side of us. It's not just mm-hmm. other people speaking yeah. it or someone wanting to show us. Yeah. We have to feel it. Yeah. 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 I mean, because that's the same way it is with me. Just Sunday to Sunday. I mean, Sunday after Sunday going to church. I mean, my pastor, he get up there. He preached the word without compromise. But at the end of the day, it's up to me to apply everything that's being taught. And I can say um, that was part of my as you call it, um, recovery, you know what I'm saying? That's what helped me to recover. Cause one day I remember, um, I was in Weatherford and I was driving down the road and I kept complaining to the Lord, like, man, I need structure because growing up in a military home with my father being a vet and, um, just being in the military itself. And then after the military, for me, I'm the type of person I need structure. Like, I don't know about other people, but for me, I don't function well outside of structure, but just being a Christian, a believer, I learned that's how God designed and made us because at the end of the day, we need him. Like, you know, they say, um, it's like a fish without water, man. That's a man without God. So for me, getting um right on that element, putting that structure back in my life, which is my recovery, um, one day the Lord said to me, he was like, son, what are you talking about? He was like, man, you you have structure. You, you have that. 
I'm like, what do you mean? You don't believe it, right? You have to live a prudent life. You have to, you know, follow orders. You have to listen to someone, which in my case is my pastor. So it's not that you don't have it. It just, I guess in that moment, uh, the moment before that moment, in my mind, I'm thinking like military. I'm still stuck in the what was versus, you know, realizing where I'm at now and realizing, bro, you still have that structure because it's stuff that you have to do every day. Then think about it. Your family depends on you. So whereas one at one point in your life, you felt like the world was who you were protecting. Man, brother, don't you think you got to protect that wife, protect that child? Like you have purpose. You got to make sure that now you're here for them because as soldiers, we so used to being there for everybody else. But the number one people sometimes we forget is our family, ourselves. Like, bro, you got to protect yourself. Because <laughs> you can't protect yourself, you can't protect the person next to you. And that's part of combat training, bro. First of all, make sure that you got your, your equipment on. Make sure you got your PPE. Make sure that you got your rounds on you. Make sure that your weapon's loaded. Just, you know, self-check. And then now you go look at your battle buddy. Make sure that person right. So it's it's the same stuff that we can apply to everyday life, like you're saying. It's like uh, all the things that we learned in basic training. It was the application of it. I don't care what they told me. It was every day. They did. They repeated over and over. It's about the application. It's everything they would teach us. And I'm learning that now. It's about that application. And so we're talking about ourselves because, for me, I believe in God. I believe in a higher power, mm-hmm. and that keeps me grounded. Yeah. But and I like what you mentioned about we need that structure in our lives. For me, that is so important because I learned a lot. It's called Mental Health of America. Real okay. big. They're yeah. really big. They're everywhere. Okay. They sent me to Washington for training as a mentor. Wow, I know that was and cool. it was it was absolutely good. They sent me to a lot of places. And believe me, they really sent because I came here to work on me. And by me working on me and volunteering, I met so many different people. So they flew me to Washington and I and I went to the same we it's called a uh boot camp, some type of like boot camp training for it. Mm-hmm. But I learned every time I went to a training, different places for training, they kept talking about the same thing, self-care. Because so many people that were great mentors, so many people that are great whatever you want to do in life, it's about talking about taking care of ourselves. Because sometimes we lose, we try to give so much away that we're not replenished. Yeah. And by that time, we get broken. Or now something is wrong. When, when things break apart, people counting on us. And we just lose everything, sight of what was really like the root, the mm-hmm. state planet with the seed. Mm-hmm. And I learned that by them always talking, every, every train I went through, self-care. When I came to Houston, because I don't want to come here, <laughs> is, it, is it here in California? My thought was, I'm going to California. I, uh, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, uh, this pastor, he was always talking, on, he was on TV and I was, Trying to figure out what my life was, but I wasn't. I just gave up. To be honest yeah. with you. But he kept talking about uh, give 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 something one life, one day in your life, and your life will change. Something different, and your life will change. And he was talking about those seeds. You just keep planting a seed, a pod, something for positive, and your life will keep changing. And I ended up here in Houston because I did not want to come here. But yeah. all the things he kept talking about, the motivation about God about how we can be planted. I didn't know nothing about me being a seed that I could grow. And now remember, all seeds don't just grow up straight sometimes. Sometimes the seed can grow, it can bend a little bit, and the wind's gonna blow on it. Or it could be a hot day and then you got rain. But I learned that when he kept talking about the seed and I got that again, I go right back to the same train I got, um, Mental Health of America. Self care, and I never knew about self care. Yeah, I was always going to do something else, either my career or to try to help someone else. But I never thought about helping me. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, and it's crazy because I think that's one of the biggest thing in the um, African American community. That's one of the things that I think um, I seen growing up, man, where we weren't taught how to manage and take care of ourselves, even though. We took care of other people. Like, it's like we always felt like we had to be there for everybody else because of, you know, some of the barriers, obstacles and things like your time different than mine. Like, I can't say, like, I understand, you know, a lot of things that you may have went through. But I know during my time, some of the remnant of that would be my parents and 
them still living out that struggle and different things that they might have suffered during their time, which, again, I can't attribute to. I can't say I understand. I know because even like, you know, I remember a little bit of your story about when you were in the military Um, at first when you, I mean, when you first joined the military and the things you went through. I can't say I went through those things because during my time, there was no racial issues or things like that. Now, did I see racist people? Yeah. And I would say from all colors, it wasn't just, you know, white folks. I had black folks who didn't like white folks particularly because they grew up in certain places. But for me, I can never say a lot of that stuff. I have battle buddies even to this day who say, man, you remember when such a racist, brother? I don't remember that because for me, I wasn't looking for that one, two. My perspective was, man, all people, you know, equal. They were all created by God. I'm going to love them regardless. And if you don't like me, hey, bro, you ain't got to be around me. I'm not tripping about that, you know, because, I mean, I'm a t- I'm the type of person um, who knows himself to where if you don't like me, I feel like you got the issue because I'm a likable guy. I don't do anything to make people go out of their way to not like me. But unfortunately, sometimes in life, you meet people like that. So, I mean, that's just how it is. But. At the end of the day, man, that had nothing to do with me. And that's how, that's where I'm at now in my life, the way I'm learning to not allow anything external to affect my day-to-day life, like what you were talking about um, with that seed and different things being planted. I mean, a seed has to deal with its environment, everything around it in order for it to grow strong. And if it doesn't grow, then it never reaches the potential or full worth. So that's how it is as I, I am as an individual, it just... I can't let stuff stop me. I can't let the naysay, I can't let what's going on around me. I can't let my past, I can't let what the army did or didn't do. I can't, I can't allow that because at the end of the day, man, I'm responsible for somebody else other than myself. (laughs) I'm a husband, I'm a father. So I I don't have time to be sitting here waddling in my mess and not progressing. So I I very much get it. I feel the same way now. Uh, I have surgery coming up sometime next month. Mm-hmm. open heart surgery and that was it was a lot of stress i have to admit but for me i'm not unhappy i'm not mad about things in my life i have a very good life yeah. and i figured you know like it's having three heart attacks and i had the cancer <laughs> it is you go from one to the next the heart attacks the cancer then i have a stroke then i'm in a wheelchair people tell me what i could or could not do i'm in a wheelchair and then now we're talking about open heart surgery. Right. But like just like I said about that seed, that plant is not going to always just grow, come out, and just go straight up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that plant may go to the side. Have, I don't know if you ever seen these shows about there's a place where there's a whole bunch of trees. And all the trees that are there, beautiful trees, but all the trees are not going straight up. Yeah, I, I've seen these shows where it shows this, it's, it's like a little forest but nothing but trees that go to the side and then they come up they grow up mm-hmm. and that's amazing because we most of us always see trees as it just it comes straight up yeah but when i saw that picture of these plants i'm going whoa that's pretty much like my life yeah. but i look how beautiful it is now yeah yeah so I, I look at life that way but uh i'm just grateful and a lot of people ask me sometimes how can you go through all that stuff and you still are so grateful? They said the right words that you're going through. You're not in. Yeah. And that's how I look at things in my life. Yeah. I'll be 66 in a couple of months. <laughs> you know, you got to look at, okay, I went through this, but thank you, God, I went through it. Yeah. I'm not in. Yeah. It's a big deal. And that's, and, that's, and that's one of the reasons why I always say I love talking to you, dude, because it's just like, you know, not only you, my uncle, through my wife, but you're a veteran. And it just, I mean, and then not just that, you're a man. I mean, you're a man's man, and I respect that. And just hearing your testimony of the things you've been through, dude, it's just like, how could I complain, man, as a young vet? And that's the one reason why, like, for me as a young veteran, I want to talk to more older veterans and get their perspectives and stories because, I mean, y'all have a lot of wisdom, man. And for me to see you as a younger gentleman continuously grow at 66 that's amazing because most people they always say well, young fools become old fools but <laughs> <laughs> and, and i'm not calling you a fool but you you know and a lot of times i hear how you talk about a lot of foolish decisions and choices you made in life but to see you say you know what bro just because i made those mistakes and did those things when i was younger that doesn't stop me from becoming a different patrick every day just let me 
work at being better, not focus on what Patrick did in the past and what happened to Patrick in the past. And I mean, just you talking about all the different things you defeated, like cancer and being in a wheelchair and losing memory and have to learn again, getting on the bus and not knowing direction. Like, brother, people can't function <laughs> and they don't have none of that. But to hear you say <laughs> you still functioning, still going, man, if I never believed in God and miracles, I think that's one. <laughs> shows me it's a I like that. because <laughs> people like you and man I'm so glad that you're here that that you're my nephew uh, you give us energy people like me yes, sir. because we hear your story and then sometimes we think as we get older we're thinking oh man uh, no one's going to ever understand what I'm talking about but by you being a veteran you was the first one to come along especially a family member that's a veteran it's going to have some understanding. Yes, My sir. sister's not going to understand when I start talking about things in the military. They will yes, hear sir. it. They're not going to feel any of it. Yes, because sir. again, just like majority of people in our life, we and just like with us, we're not going to understand a lot of things other people can go through. Yeah, that's true. I went, I went through all that, but I haven't lost the leg. I haven't lost the arm. I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. And when people are there, you know, we're thinking, oh, man, my life is so bad. Can you imagine how they may feel? Yeah. We think our life is, but at some point, I think we build our, as we get all these here tools, coping skills, knowing what our boundaries are, knowing that there are solutions yeah. to, you know, to a lot of things, then our life changes. Then that, 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 that seed keeps growing. And like I say, even if it goes to the side, it's going to grow up. Yeah. It's going to reach that, it's going to want that sign, that yeah. build the sign, how it makes us feel, because you give me that energy. Yeah, so. You know, I, I, well, first of all, I'm definitely you. Al, I'm Air Force, you're Army. But man, I, <laughs> you Army guys, I, you got that look. Boy, you got that. You got that, that look. <laughs> that heavy voice. <laughs> and you know what? This makes a lot of us happy. Veterans just hearing from other veterans, talking to yeah. other veterans, because I didn't. No one knew I was a veteran until I came here to Houston. Yeah. I never talked about it. Yeah, and, that's, that's a lot of veterans. A lot. A lot. You don't talk about it. And I didn't talk about it with my family. But now I love this. Being a veteran, I love messing with other veterans. Yeah. That's, that's a pleasure I do have. You know how we play with each other? <laughs> hey, we were like only 17 and 18 at one point. It would be hot days. And we would still be messing with one another. We could be yeah. working out. You know, like yeah. you wake you up early, early in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, you eat child for like 15 minutes. And then you <laughs> had to go, you had to go work mm -hmm. out. And we would still be playing with one another. Man, I remember those days. Yeah. I remember those days when people, some of the guys would start singing. Wow. You know, I'm talking about it's a hot day where I was on a flight line. It's so dark on hot in that flight line because the planes are taking off. But to go to the side, like three or four people sit standing there and some guys start singing. Wow. And the sun just coming up, but the planes are taking off. It's hot. You feel the dust from them when they're going up as well, the heat. But the guy was singing. Man, I remember those days. Wow. Opposed to the, we think about the bad things in our life. As I'm getting older, I remember more good things in my life. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have the tools, the coping yeah. skills, the boundaries. It depends on what you want, where you want to be in your life, and what do you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of that, um, I take that as learning who your true enemy is. Because the day um, in church and not trying to make this religious, but that's just a part of, you know, what I, I love talking about. The day in um, church, um, my pastor, he was preaching and he was teaching us a lot about who our true enemy is, which, you know, in, um, for those who are biblical, um, it's the devil himself, um, how he gets in people, he uses these people to do certain things in, to us to the point to where we become the enemy from an enemy to the point to where all we do is view other human beings as the reason why we don't progress, why we don't do, why we don't grow. And for a long time, that used to be me. Like I used to blame everything. And I think um, I had that moment today, but that moment didn't start today. It started some time, I, I would say a long time, a, a, a little while back when I was um, going to counseling as a veteran, like for me, the biggest thing I always thought was the military was responsible for everything that I had been through. But what I didn't realize was they were just the bottle top on the bottle. And my life before the military is what was 
part of the cause, or if not majority of the cause of why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And then until I started dealing with those things, I couldn't come to the knowledge or understanding of the truth today like I did, realizing that, bro, my, my, my enemy is not flesh and blood. It's not people. It's not what folks have done to me. It's not what the military has done to me. It's what some of my choices have allowed the enemy to do through me. And then some of the choices that other people made to allow the enemy to use them to hurt me or do the different things. But I had to learn, man, we all hurt people. We all do wrong things to people. We all have done our share of, you know, hurting, destroying. I mean, we we all did our part. But at some point, you got to come to that place of God to where you repent, get it right, fix your, uh, let him help you fix your life. And at the end of the day, you have to do something because he ain't just going to move the mountains out of your life. He said, you got to have faith to move mountains. So for me, I mean, that's what I've been doing, man, having the faith with the works and just, you know, trying to grow as a young man, because I mean, a lot of times I can sit back and make excuses. But one thing I learned is when you got a family and you have people depending on you again, there is no time for excuse. You got to keep going. You got to keep <laughs> fighting. And it's the same way it was as a soldier. Like when we at war, we don't have time to be talking about what you've been through, what happened right now. And the enemy is trying to kill us all. He don't care. His he don't care about your color, your nationality. He don't care about none of that. All he know is you're an American. You dressed in American military uniform, and I'm here to get you and all these other people who look like you. I don't care what color they are. Y'all in the same uniform, so y'all here together. And that's why I think as veterans, it's like it's crazy how we can leave that fight and come back, and again we revert back to what we used to be not understanding, like, bro, you were part, you a warrior member of a team, which is something we say in the Soldier of Creed, and how could you forget that? Yeah. Like, it's about taking care of those to your left and to your right. Like, you, you still have to apply that. That don't change because you took off the uniform. That's something that got ingrained which, into you because that's who you are. And that's what I look at what we doing as us, you know, doing that. Like, we... You know, sitting here helping one another out and hoping to help other veterans out too, because that's what it's about. It's about helping one another. But sometimes the system can fail. And I'm not saying the VA is a total failure, but there are some gaps. There are some lacks. There are a lot of things that I don't think get addressed and it gets covered over. It gets masqueraded as if, you know, we're getting the help. Are they doing this and they're doing that? Because I have people walk up to me, oh, veterans, y'all get this. And I'm like, what veterans? Brother, do you know the loops and the hoops and the, <laughs> the things we got to do to get that? What you mean? Brother, they don't just give us stuff like that, brother. It's stipulations and everything. I, mama told me a long time ago, ain't nobody going to give you no free money. There's always <laughs> some tied to it. Oh, and I think that's a good thing to understand. But at the same time, you know, I don't like sometimes how they advertise things as if, hey, we trying to benefit every veteran. No, a lot of times it don't benefit every veteran. Sometimes it, it benefits select groups, select people for whatever reason that is. I don't know. That's true, but that's life. Yeah. And we learned that we, uh, from when I was young, I didn't learn life. And I like the fact that when I came here, they were talking about, uh, again, about that self-care part. You have to look, I looked at in my life now, what role did I play in a lot of things in my life? At one point, I thought at some points you do think you're a victim and you don't know why you was a victim mm -hmm. or whatever may have happened. But then I look at my life now, what role did I play in every aspect of my, old, my whole life? Mm -hmm. Whether I allowed someone to abuse me, whether I did something wrong to someone else, what role did I play? Because yeah. when we only look at the narrative to be about others. Mm -hmm. What about we tell our own story mm -hmm. about who we are? Mm -hmm. Okay, what role do we play in all yeah. this? Opposed to always thinking that, oh, this happened to me, that happened, oh, cool, it happened to everybody. Yeah, everybody. And sometimes it happened worse. Yeah. So when you start yeah. thinking about, okay, I see my role I play. And for me, God doesn't want me to think about what happened. <laughs> I just didn't want to do right now. Yeah. I, I'm still here. Yeah. All I want you to do is listen just listen to me and you can grow. Like I said, about that seed going to the side, like that tree going to the side, but that tree comes straight up. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful forest of all those type of trees. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I'm thinking about, okay, self-care. Okay, what do I want? How to work on me? And coming to Houston, and although I've been, 
it's been great. Uh, I got a lot of things I did not see coming, like my psychiatrist gave me, but I worked for it, but I came here to change me, not the yes, world. Yeah. And that's how, when you start changing you, man, your story is amazing to me. Yeah. How I remember when I first came here, and I'd be looking at our time at some point, we had to track our time, but when I came here, I got a convertible. So I, I leave Florida, come to Houston, I'm on the freeway and I already had the strokes. So I don't know where I'm going. And my car can talk to me. Nice car. And I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck on the freeway because I got lost again. I ain't listening to the car. I got lost again. So I just called my mentor and he's in Florida. And I'd be crying this man on the phone, uh, 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 on the freeway. And he kept hearing it. Uh, he heard it for like a, quite some time. He said, well, how is that working for you? I'm going, what do you mean how's it working? Man, I'm on the freeway, yada, yada. <laughs> he, called, but he, said, he kept asking me, well, how's that working for you? Then one day, I was stressed about something. And then all of a sudden, I just calmed down. I thought about what he said. How's it working for me? I need to change it. Got rid, of the, got rid of the convertible. Got a little small place to live in. When people, some people said, you can't live by yourself. Yeah. When you had a major stroke, you can't read, you can't write. At that point, I could not order from McDonald's. Same guy that did stage lighting for a living. You got to read the script. You got to go to rehearsal. You got to know who's going to do what, where that light has to come on, how the stage has to be built, the power. But all of a sudden, you, can, you don't understand what's coming out on, on TV. Wow. People are talking, but yet I don't understand. And But when he said, how is it working for me? I applied to my whole life. If something happens, how is it working for me? Change it. <laughs> I, I have that power to change it. And sometimes we think, oh, man, I can't change this. Yes, you can. It mm -hmm. may not always be what you want when you want it. Mm -hmm. But trust me, I believe my God's going to put me where he wants me to be mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. I may not be agreeable, yeah. but it's where I am in my life. Yeah. But no, you give me that as strength because our age is different. But man, uh, your story, your life, how you have changed your life. That's Listening cool. to you and my niece, military, Together, man, I don't know many families that are that that are together. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you and you and the, I, I'm be honest, you speaking volumes because I would say statistically, we weren't supposed to make it because most majority of our time being married as military folks, we were separated. Then you talk about each of us bringing our own duffel bags to this journey that we call life. And then you talk about me being crazy with, you know, some mental issues and things that I needed to deal with, man. I would say it's just by the grace of God that we still married. And, you know, one thing I told her, I wouldn't change nothing that happened to us. At first, I thought it was, you know, a death sentence on our relationship. I thought it was a death sentence on my life as a young man because I've done a lot of things that I wasn't supposed to do, made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of bad decisions. And. Just a lot of things, man. But um, I guess, you know, I always go back to the fact that I have other people depending on me, which, you know, for me is my wife and my son, especially my son. You know, he's learning everything from me. Um, He's my why. Like, I, that's my why. That's why I keep pushing, because I can't tell him how to keep pushing if he never see me keep pushing. So, I mean, those are things, you know, that I had to make decisions on. Like, OK, am I going to allow my, you know, bad habits or the negative things I'm doing or my past, I'm allowed this and that to stop me. And I had to make a decision, man. I mean, and that was only a decision I could make because at one point, you know, another day, another story. Um, She she can say she was about to hit those deuces on me, but it's just the grace of God that we still here together. Because like you, she didn't want to come back to Texas, but the Lord had different plans and he brought us yeah. back here. And I'll tell people, even being here, being in my ministry that I'm in, it's a fight, man. It's a fight every day because I learned sometimes when you're supposed to be a place, that's when you face your greatest fights. People always think when you where you're supposed to be, it's going to be comfortable. You ain't going to go through some kind of fight. But for me, it's been a fight because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be adamant, believe it, get here. And all of a sudden, it's another military situation where it's the fight of my life. But on the other side of that fight, man, I'll say it's peace, it's joy, it's a family, um, it's the structure, it's everything that I need. It's not always easy, but it's a lot of self-sacrifice that you got to give up. And that's one of the things, you know, I remember from the military, selfless service. You got to give up yourself, man. And that, that's sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is die. 
And I learned even with seeds, the only for a seed to grow, it, it has to die. <laughs> it has to die because if it keeps trying to live, it's never going to grow. Yeah, I look at, I like that. Uh, and also what you were saying, I have a big hole in my ceiling over there. It's been there for over a year, right? Mm -hmm. I got to deal with the contractors, my homeowners association, uh, my insurance company, but it's been over a year. Everyone's fighting for this, right? And at first, well, actually, I've been dealing with this for quite some time, but I learned that's just a hole in the wall. Yeah. That's not a hole in me. Mm -hmm. I, I look at that now, yeah. that like something happened, right? Now, how do I get it fixed? Yeah. If I was not a veteran, if I did not have those skills, sometimes we don't always get them from family. Mm -hmm. I had a great stepdad. I'll be honest with yeah. you. Great man. Army, he got me. In fact, because of him and how he was so structured, you know, how he treated me, yeah. uh, man, it changed my life. He changed my life. And so now that uh, I look back and things in my life and how I remember how good he was to me, that gave me, the, the I guess, like like you said about the, how the seed has to grow, the seed really has to have some good water at some place, mm -hmm. some yeah. water, some place to grow. But he gave me that. So now, although I got a hole in my ceiling, man, I had... I had people cut off half my brain up here when I had that stroke to get water from my, I, not water, but uh, blood. It was, uh, it was bleeding out there. So they take off half this. So now both ears don't match up. You know, my jaw goes to the side sometimes because of the stroke. I don't feel some things on the right. I don't see that well on the right. But I learned that there are so many tools that we can learn. Like we learned in the military. Yeah. There are so many tools. And when I came to Houston, it was really the VA. People at the VA that helped me out. I'll be honest yeah. with you. Everything yeah. don't have to be perfect. It yeah. just has to be. Yeah. Great people like my psychiatrist when I first came on board.